Hi guys, uh, today we're going to work through some binomial questions um, and obviously for these ones here, these are pretty well the sort of questions you'll get in your test um, and so it's really about using your cat guide to answer these questions. So, um, so true and false test consists of 20 questions. A student guesses answers at random. So in other words, you know, they've got a 50% chance of getting it right or wrong. So find the probability that student's correct in all 20 questions. Okay, so all 20 questions. So what we're looking at is uh, getting a value of 20. So when we come to uh, doing our working out, uh, let's let's just show you the things that I'll recommend you, you put down. All right. So the first thing, and in this particular case, it's probably not that important, but I, I still think it is important to write these down. So in here somewhere, I'd be writing p equals a half, q equals a half. All right. And then I'd also be writing n n equals 20, all right, somewhere. All right, so having those values in, in mind, I think is really important. Now you could do it the old fashioned way, but I think it's better to use your calculator. So the setting out for number A is the probability that x, which is our variable, is equal to 20. All right, because it's a one-off result, then what we're looking at is using our binomial Oh, my pen's playing up. So by my by binomial uh, PDF, okay, and so then what we're going to be putting down there is obviously the number it's out of, the likelihood of getting a successful result, and then the number that we're trying to get, which is our x value. All right, so in this particular case, then I go to my calculator. All right, remember it's the second function distribution there. Use your up arrow, it's quicker. And when we're looking at alpha A, so it's a PDF because it's a one-off result that we're looking for. So the number of trials is 20. The probably getting a successful is 0.5. The X value that we're looking for is getting 20. We paste that in. So that's what you'll do if you don't have my operating system. And you get an answer of uh, 9.56, or just 9.54 by 10 to the minus 7. Okay, so let's just do that. So that's equal to 9.57 by 10 to the minus 7. Now, you obviously understand that value as being 0 0.000000000. 000 uh, right, so we would say it's approximately, what? Well, zero chance okay it's approximately zero chance um, they've got pretty well about one chance in a million of guessing all 20 correct so you know in terms of making a, a, a you know a guess you're not going to get a good mark by just guessing you've got to know your work b getting exactly 10 questions right well it's the same process as was what we did here so x equals 10 so that's equal to the binomial uh, binomial PDF, so the setting out that I'm showing you here is uh, exactly what I'd be expecting to see you doing your test. Um, so it's 20, half, and it's 10, getting exactly 10 correct. Now, again, with the calculator, you could go second function in, but I'll, I'll go through the whole process again so you can follow. Uh, so going up to your binomial PDF, okay. So it's 20, uh, 0.5, and we're going to make that 10 now. Right, so going in there, that's 0.1762, so 17.62% chance. All right, so that's 17.62% um, chance. So you're not going to do very well just to get half marks. You've got not even much chance of getting half marks by guessing. So at most 10 questions, okay, so C at most 10, so probably that x is um, less than or equal to 10, okay, now this is where we use our binomial PDF, binomial CDF, uh, CDF, I'm having trouble writing this morning, 
Um, so that's going to be 20. Still got a half. I'm going to put 10 in there. So what will that will actually do is it will work out for our value over here. It will work out this area over here for us. So technically what it's doing, it's working out 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And it's adding all of those results together, isn't it? So that's actually working out the probability of getting 0 plus the probability of getting 1 plus the probability of getting 2. Now imagine if you used the other formula to do all this. This would be so tedious. It would take you forever. Uh, what You wouldn't get probably a couple of questions finished in the test or in the exam. It would be crazy. Right, so that would be equal to, now we'll go to our binomial probability there um, on our calculator. And so therefore what we've got to do here is we go to distribution, up arrow again. Now it's the B one now we're looking at, the CDM. So we've got 20 trials, still got 0.5 as a chance of getting it correct. And now we've got a value of 10. So that, as I said, we're working at 0, 1, 2, up to 10. So that's a 58.81% chance. Okay, so, oh, wrong document. Um, so, so that's going to give me an answer, uh, approximately equal to 0 0.5881. Okay, 58.81% chance. Now the last question is at least 15. Right. This is where we need to use our complementary event. So probably at least 15 is getting 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, yeah, I did. So we're going to say it's equal to 1 take the probability of x being less than or equal to 14. Now the reason we're doing that is because when we're looking in our binomial CDF, it only works out from left to right. So what we're looking at here is getting 14 or above. What we have to do is we have to say, well, that's really the opposite of getting 14 or less. And we know either getting 15 or above or 14 or less has to add up to 100% of our probability chances. So we have to work out this one here because we can't do that on our calculator because it only works left to right. Okay. So that's the easy thing for you to do. Um, in terms of, I've run out of space, I've got another example ready to go. Um, so what that will be is one take, one take the binomial, binomial CDF of simply um, 20, a half and 14. Right, so if we go onto our calculator and do that, um, yeah, you can do this whole in one step if you like. So it's one take, rather than doing it in two steps, no big deal. I mean, all my, after after you putting that into the, uh, writing it down as the answer. Uh, so I go to my distribution, using my app arrow, going to B. Right, so 20, everything else is the same here, so 14. Um, and then paste that in. And that's going to give me an answer of uh, 20, uh, 0 0.207. Um, so that's a 2.07% chance of getting more than 14, more than 15, at least 15 right. All right, so I think those questions are pretty easy. Um, I don't think you should have too many problems with those, but there's a range of questions that you need to do uh, in a test situation. Now, coming down to the second example, um, similar sort of question. So over a period of time, it's found that 6% of goods uh, produced by a manufacturer are defective. If a sample of 12 goods is randomly selected, find the probability that there will be... Right, so again, as I said before, we should write down N. All right, so N is 12 goods. We should write down our p-value. Our p-value is equal to uh, 0.06. So therefore that means our Q value, if we're doing it the old fashioned way, is equal to 0 0.94. All right, so that's that example there. So going through uh, these, so no defective. So part A, so probability that X is equal to zero. 
right? So that's equal to uh, binomial binomial uh, get in my pen, sorry, PDF um, so that will be, how many goods are there? There's 12 goods that have been tested we've got a 0.06% chance that they're going to be defective and we're looking for zero of them all right, so you go to your calculator. Um, so distribution, and we're doing a binomial, so we have to go up there. Um, and then basically putting in 12 is our value there. 0.06 is our probability of, of a defective uh, appliance. And then zero, we're looking at that value. So we've got a 47.59% uh, chance. All right, so... So 0 0.4759 is our value there. So that works out to be 47.59% uh, chance. Okay, let's quickly get through this. Um, at least one defective, all right? So probability that x is greater than or equal to one. So that would be equal to, if we did the old fashioned way, one plus probability of getting 2 plus probability getting 3 plus probability getting 4 uh, plus dot 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 up to the probability getting 12 defective all right do you see it be fairly tedious so probably getting at least one defective now what's the opposite of doing that well that would be one take the probability of x being less than or equal to or zero, isn't it? Probably x being equal to zero. All right, so we've already worked out what that one is. So that's equal to one take 0.478. There's this, so that's going to be equal to 0 0.5241. Got a 52.41% chance. So that's what we call the complementary event of that. Okay, so looking at that, so at least, uh, what's a probably at most one defective? All right, so that would be equal to, when we're looking at C, uh, probability at most, so X is less than or equal to one. So that's equal to the probability of getting zero plus the probability of getting one defective. Okay, now we can just do that straight on our calculator anyway, binomial. binomial uh, CDF because remember we're working left to right so that would be uh, 12 0.06 and 1 okay and that will work at our value for it so um, again to our distribution using our up arrows the quickest way to get to the CDF All right so we're going to put in 12 there 0.06 and we're looking at 1 no, so that will work out 1 and 0 for us. So we've got 84.05% chance of getting at least uh, 0 or 1. So that's approximately equal to 0 0.8405. And then the last one that we have to do there, at less than 4 defective. So less than 4 defective means 1, 2, uh, 0, 1, 2 or 3 okay so we can say that's equal to the probability of x being less than or equal to uh, was that less than 4? less than 4 so less than or equal to 3 alright so that's equal to the binomial binomial oh god my pen's playing up um, CDF alright 12 0 0.06 and then we're looking at 3 so we go to our calculator now it's going to be the proof of the same thing as what we just did um, up arrow getting to our CDF All right, so everything else is the same we just got to change that to 3 so that will work out 0, 1, 2 and 3 and tell us that we've got a 99.57% chance OK, 
Okay, so now if you think about that as an example, uh, 0 0.9957. So, you know, you'd be expecting, you know, to get either 0, there'll be a high percentage of that, then you might get 1 or 2 or 3. So you'd be expecting that as a reasonable value. Uh, you'd be pretty confident that you're only going to get no more than 3 um, defective components when you're testing 12 of them. All right, so I hope this ex uh, helps you when you're looking at using your technology to answer these binomial questions. Um, the next bit and the last bit on the binomials is we're going to be looking at um, the correction coefficient for for this. And so what we're going to be doing, because um, this is a bit of a pain, right, when we've got only working left to right, if we can make this a normal distribution, then it'll make uh, our life a little bit easier. So I'll, I'll talk to you in the next video. See ya.